From legendary actors like Sylvester Stallone to some of his best actor friends, there are loads of people that James Gunn has worked with on both the MCU and DCU. Starting with Michael Rooker, who I'm sure most of you are aware of. After all, he's been a part of both the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, as well as James's The Suicide Squad. Any guesses as to what Rooker played in both those films? Well, his role in GOTG is one that I'm sure just about everyone knows. After all, it's the iconic Ravager, Captain Yondu Udonta. He's the space pirate that sort of served as Star-Lord's father, and essentially raised Peter to be who he was in the series. The second film definitely makes their connection more prominent, bringing home the point of found family and all that, so I guess it's all the more fitting that Rooker's other character with Gunn is also a part of a film that's all about unlikely heroes coming together. In The Suicide Squad, he played the mercenary Savant. He was captured by Task Force X in the film, but if you forgot about the guy, I don't blame you. He didn't really last too long and ended up dying due to Amanda Waller. Oops. Dude died in both the projects that he worked on with James. He really can't catch a break, can he? But he's not the only actor who's worked with James in both the DCU and MCU, because Sylvester Stallone is also another actor who had the honor. Since James has only ever made the Guardians films for the MCU, be ready to see a bunch of actors from those movies. Sylvester played a relatively minor role considering the grand scope of the MCU. He was a former Ravager ally of Yondu's called Stakar Ogord, and while his time in the MCU may have been confined to a cameo, fans were still ecstatic to see a legend like him finally entering the Marvel Universe. But of course, you can't just hire Rocky Balboa for a single role, now can you? For the DC Universe, James once again asked Stallone to work alongside him on a project, and this time, he was asked to voice the dim-witted but lovable King Shark. Yep, if this is the first time you're hearing about this, rest assured, I was just as surprised when I found out about this. I've gotta say, Sylvester's part in the film was amazing. King Shark is easily one of the best contributions that James has made to the DCU so far. And I'm glad that he's bringing his A-game, especially when it comes to adapting such weird and ultimately wholesome characters. From Groot to King Shark, this guy really is the master at this, isn't he? Though, here is an actor you may not have expected to see on this list. It's Palm Clementiev. Of course, everyone knows Palm as Mantis in the Guardians movies. She brings her amazing alien charm to the role. And with how the story has progressed, her character has only gotten better and better. Especially with how she's basically a sister to Star-Lord now, which is a connection I definitely did not expect to see happen. But sure, fans know of her role in the MCU, but just where is she in the DC Universe? Well, turns out Palm had a super secretive cameo in The Suicide Squad. And guess what? it was added as a personal request by James himself. She was seen during the bar sequence when the squad is waiting for the thinker to arrive. Palm is one of the dancers that were in the background in the scene, and she's not the only MCU star who was supposed to be there. Dave Bautista, who plays Drax in the MCU, was also going to join the scene, but he unfortunately couldn't be added due to scheduling issues. Though fans definitely think that Palm may have a future in the DCU later down the line too, James has even hinted at the actress making a potential appearance in the new DC universe. After all, I'm sure they aren't going to have that little cameo of Palm's the only thing she's ever done for DC. But don't think this list is over yet, because Steve Agee also appeared in Gunn's projects for both the MCU and the DCU. Steve played the role of John Economos in The Suicide Squad. The guy was so hilarious that James brought him back for The Peacemaker Show. And honestly, he killed it even in that series. He just had the best reaction to all the crazy things that were constantly happening in that series. But there's another role he did for DC. This is the fact that he provided the mocap for King Shark. Pretty cool, right? So we use Steve, we photograph Steve, and we see exactly how he's moving and what he's doing, and 
The animators are able to use that as much or as little as it is of use to us. On set, that was Steve just wearing. Though his role in the MCU is a lot less prominent, in fact, you may not even remember seeing the guy on screen. He plays the role of one of the Ravagers in the Guardians films. Yeah, I don't even think he's got a name. But hey, that's just the way things go sometimes. Don't worry though, James and Steve are really close friends. After all, he's worked with the director on numerous projects outside of the DCU and the MCU. Like films like Brightborn and Super. And I definitely expect to see a lot more of John Economos in the updated DC Universe too. There's another fan favorite actor that has worked with James on both superhero universes. Yep, I'm talking about Nathan Fillion. From Castle to The Rookie, the star really has done tons of projects over the years. But who knew that he's also dabbled in both the DCU and the MCU? In the Marvel Universe, Nathan played the role of an alien that threatened Quill in the kiln. He's a big blue prisoner and Nathan only provided his voice for the role. This means that there's always the chance that the actor may once again appear in the MCU with a live action role, though considering James has his plate full with DC projects, it probably won't be with Gunn. Though he may definitely get a chance to work with James in the DCU, Nathan had a brief role in the Suicide Squad as the detachable kid. Remember the guy with that weird superpower where he could remove his arms? Yeah. That was Nathan Fillion. While he definitely gets damaged quite a bit, it's not entirely confirmed if he died or not, and in the world of movies, that means that he's definitely going to come back. It might be fun to see just what James has cooked for him in the new DC Universe. Speaking of a character with an interesting future, it's Chikwudi Iwuji. He was Clemens Mern in Peacemaker. The guy had a literal alien in his head the whole time. Definitely a very James Gunn thing to happen to him, that's for sure. And while the actor hasn't formally made his appearance in the MCU just yet, he's about to very soon. After all, he's playing the villain High Evolutionary in the final Guardians film. This bad guy is looking to perfect society with genetic experimentation. And when has that ever turned out good for anyone? He looks like he's going to be a big villain for the MCU, and even if James may not be planning on working in the Marvel Universe for the time being, the High Evolutionary may still appear in future projects. Well, assuming he survives the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie, that is. James stated that after he worked with the actor on Peacemaker, he just had to bring him back one more time. It looks like he had a blast, and I can see why. Iwuji is really great in every role he's offered. But those are all the actors who've worked with James in both the DCU and the MCU.